Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the John Papaloni Show. Today we have Crystal Storm. Crystal, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, John. I'm excited to be here. Absolute pleasure. I've been looking forward to this conversation pretty much all day. So. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's it. No pressure. Now I just have to make sure I don't disappoint. <laughs> I, I'm sure you won't. I mean, we've uh, already started a conversation. I thought about it and said, hmm, before I get into this conversation, I probably should start hit re hitting record. So, <laughs> but uh, I, I have that problem as well. You make sure you hit the red button. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Especially when you're having such a great conversation and stuff. Awesome. So let's start off with a, uh, you know, with you saying who you are, what you do and how you got there. So for people who don't know. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, my name is Crystal Storm. I am a writer, uh, first and foremost at heart, which means that we don't like talking about ourselves. So that's it. That's a bio. I'm, I'm a writer. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I've written uh, two science fiction novels, and I've been in podcasting back in the days of like blog talk radio when it was like free and you could, you know, and it was actually like a great platform to use for podcasting and stuff. So that's how long I've been in podcasting. Um, and more recently, I run the Tales of the Forgotten Fiction Network with my partner. We make audio dramas in multiple genres, um, having a lot of fun voice directing, writing scripts, voice acting. So anything that's creative and involving like content producing, um, I'm there for it. Fantastic. Now, how did you get into that? I mean, because that's not an easy thing. I mean, I've heard of acting. Every Like a lot of people get into the business saying, I want to be an actress or an actor or whatever, right? But And yeah. most people fail, let's be honest. And they're sure. waiters by uh, day and uh, actor by night. And But voice acting is kind of different, right? It's not like something people typically think of. So how did that come about? Accidentally, like a lot of things, I'm, I, you know, I'm very ADHD. So anybody with ADHD can can relate that you have this idea and then you just jump into something and you're either really good at it and it sticks or it was just like one of those brain days and it just kind of falls away. Um, but it started because I had written oh, maybe like 10 years ago, this fan fiction in the Star Wars universe, because I'm a huge geek, I'm a huge nerd. And I was, I stumbled upon some friends on Twitter that they had audio dramas and I listened to a couple and I was like, well, what a great idea this would be if I could convert this into a script and get some voice actors and just see how it goes. So that's what we did. And that's how I flexed my chops to see if I was any good at voice acting. And the show is called Legacy, a Star Wars audio drama. It's an unofficial project, but it took off. It literally took off. It connected us with so many other amazing voice actors and just a beautiful community. And from there, you just, you know, if, if it's something that you love to do, you just learn and you get better at it. And it kind of blossomed for there. I'm in uh, Marvel Move, which is an official Marvel project. It's a fitness app that it's out right now. You can get it. Uh, you'll hear me in it, uh, the Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch story in Dreams. I can't tell you who I'm playing yet because the story hasn't come out, but you'll get to hear me in that. And, you know, it was just one of those things where I just jumped into it because I loved it. And then I learned how to do it. And I found out I was pretty good at it. Fantastic. Now, I would imagine that, uh, you know, yeah, I would imagine that you, like, like we were talking about earlier, I got a kind of a radio voice. So I mm -hmm. think it would fit into that. Absolutely. Yeah. So then uh, that's kind of exciting. I mean, and like my passion was uh, radio, to be honest. I grew up, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I did not want to be a uh, disc jockey, even, even though I was a DJ. And that's how I started. Uh -huh. um, my whole, uh, my whole obsession was to get on the radio. And really, that's how I ended up being a DJ because <laughs> I couldn't get on the radio unless I went to school and did all other things. So I said, I'm going to find the workaround. The workaround is become a DJ, get the club to pick you. And then if you're the uh, DJ at the club that the radio station's at, then you're the DJ on the radio. And then that's how you got onto radio without going to the school. And uh, that's how I did it. But it was like nice. uh, short lived and then it's always been a passion. So yeah, now I kind of in a way, you know, by talking to you, I realized that I can, uh, you know, take that passion and move it a step forward. 100%. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, listen, you've got the setup, you've got the mic, just jump right in. Yeah, exactly. So with that being said, though, I mean, you don't just do voice acting, you wrote novels, right? Like, mm -hmm. like books. I mean, I want to write a book and I find it impossible and you wrote two books. So that's <laughs> catching my attention. <laughs> it's not easy. It's, it's not, it is, you know, <sighs> writing a book is, it is absolutely a labor of love. It is, that's, that's all there is to it. It is because I don't think there's anything scarier than just staring at a blank page. Cause it's so, I mean, you have all these ideas in your head and they're fantastic. And, and I'm, I'm a very visual person, so I need to be able to see a story. Um, but then taking that idea in your head and then putting it in a novel structure is a whole big daunting task. Um, 
you know, I wrote the first two and they kind of just vomited out of me. Um, and these days I'm finding it a little bit easier to um, write scripts instead for audio dramas because I find it just a little bit less stressful than writing a novel. Um, but yeah, it's it's been lovely. And it's if you want to write a book, go for it. I say absolutely. If you've got a story to tell, do it. Um, do I have any tips for you into how to get started other than just start? Dig in. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, just dig in and love it. And you know what? Just a little bit at a time, I will say, because a lot of a lot of authors that I follow, I mean, I, there's this one author I follow and he's like a machine. He writes like 5,000 words a day. It's ridiculous. And then there's another author I follow who is just as successful as he does. And she writes in very small increments. Like she'll like for 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. So there's no wrong way to do it. Just find your flow and get it out and one page at a time. See, finding the flow is where I find the problem, right? Because I mean, if you uh -huh. if I write my story, here it is. Wanted to be a D, wanted to be on radio. Was a DJ. Got on radio. Started a print company. Wanted to be a graphic designer. Went to school for graphic designing. Got into the print business. Developed into the marketing business. Didn't know what the what a website was until it came out and why it was so important. Then I discovered the internet wasn't crashing, so I got into the websites. Then I sold the business. Stayed. I uh, started up an internet radio business. Did very well. Parents got sick stayed at home uh, to take care of them, closed that business, got into real estate, sold real estate, got my mortgage license and created an investment fund. And here's my life. And there's my book. <laughs> Listen, but that's a great story to tell. So if you just look <laughs> at that from like a storyteller perspective, like you have so much knowledge, like that's just that's <laughs> phenomenal. So much like just bounce, boop, 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 boop. Did this was successful. Did this was successful. Like, that's great. Yes. Write that story. Absolutely. Oh, that was the story. That was my problem. That's the story. <laughs> I feel like we need we need more filler. We need I need more, John. I need the story. I need I need the dialogue. I need I need the scenes, the settings, the the feelings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm trying to get out of you to learn. How do I get in those fillers? Because for me, it's that simple. <laughs> it's like... oh, <yeah. laughs> well, okay. Let me ask you this then. What is? Um, do you read a lot of nonfiction? Nonfiction, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I do. I do. I got it wrong. I don't read fiction. I read nonfiction. Yeah. So you have to really find your favorite nonfiction authors and kind of model yourself after them. Like their books and their stories. That's that's literally how to tell yours. And listen, start with each section of your life. So start at the beginning and talk about how you got there, the people that helped you. Um, just, you know, you got to be, especially if you're writing nonfiction and it's your story, you just got to be really open and raw and vulnerable and just talk about, you know, every little step of the process in detail. The first time you write with your heart, you really do. You just let it all out, get it all on paper. Then you make all the passes at it and you edit it down and all that kind of stuff. But the first time you just got to go crazy with it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I get that part. Now, when you wrote your book, I mean, did you have someone edit it or uh, review it or did you uh, just sort of uh, look at it yourself, look at it a dozen times and say good enough? Well, I think I think all authors need an editor, period, flat, point blank. Um, when I first put when I released my book the very first time, I did find an editor, but I was very, very, very new to the game, made a lot of mistakes and just didn't pick a good one. Um, and then I recently, a couple years ago, I kind of I uh, I republished both books with better cover art, a better editor, um, just to put them back out there again to kind of like this is everything that I've learned about this process of being an indie self-published author. So um, but yeah, editors are editors are crucial. They are absolutely if you don't think you need an editor, you probably need to. I'm just gonna. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like the lawyer who wants to represent himself. Right, 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 right. It's just, I mean, listen, we're we're writers, and we're very, very good at that. And you have to do some self editing, but you need somebody who is not in your story to tell you to give you that type of feedback and to just fix things. And there's just just find an editor that's great that you trust that you have a great connection with that you're going to listen to when they tell you, hey, this sentence is not needed or hey, it sucks. You know. Um, and just and just go from it from there. But yes, all authors need an editor and I will die on that hill. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So now what was inspiration be all that? Like, I mean, come on, we got to let, let's be honest. I, I'm going to assume that you had the same story I had growing up, which is go to school, get a good education so you can get a good job so you can get married, have kids, buy that white picket fence, retire and then do all your traveling, everything else you want to do. 
excluding the part that usually when you get to that retirement age, you're in so much pain and you can't move. <laughs> that right. the only place your your travel is going to be from your bedroom to your toilet, right? And that's going to be your travel spot. <laughs> right, right, one hundred percent. What? Yes, yeah. I had I had the boomer mom that kind of instilled that in me. Um, still trying to instill that in me as I flutter around to all my creative entrepreneurial, you know, ventures and and all that good stuff. But um, the inspiration for my first two novels was really that I was going through kind of a, a difficult period in my life. And I was learning all different types of things about myself and the world. And I somehow figured that I was going to tie those lessons and my exploration of that into this fictional story. Um, because I was just a super creative person and I was doing all kinds of geeky stuff like role playing and all that kind of th all those kinds of things. Shout out to everybody who was in AOL chat rooms back in the day. That's how old I am telling on myself. I remember uh, those. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that that's really what it was born from this this fictional world that I was collaborating in with all these other amazing writers. And then my just kind of journey of growing up, really. So I put all that into one story and shoved it out there into the world. So and you said it was fiction. Yeah. Absolutely. It's fiction. It is. It is. It is science fiction. Yeah. It's like science fiction, like sprinkled with just like little like nuggets of I don't want to say truth, but just my kind of like, I don't know, life lessons, things that I learned. Right. But it has truth in there. So it's not totally fiction. Not totally. Not so. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> it is a book about aliens who take over. It's about aliens and mobsters who fight each other. So we're kind of. Got fiction. it. Got it. So, so, so <laughs> you took the real story. Uh -huh. and, and and made it into something that seems preposterous and there is, therefore it's fiction. There you go. Absolutely. Got it. Got it. Absolutely. That's the story. That's what we're going with. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So with that being said, right? So like, I'm assuming that you just didn't wake up one day and become an author, wake up one day, become an entrepreneur. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, what was your, where I'm going with this is what was your first job and how, how did you realize that the whole working for someone wasn't for you? Yeah. So I was I was in corporate America for a while and I worked as a records manager. And if people don't know what that is, that's basically it was a, a company where they basically you would send them like your, your mortgage documents or invoices or something. And we put them in big machines and we'd scan them and make them online like you can't get more corporate America type technology, you know, crap than that. And I did, I did that. I did that for quite a while. And while I was working that nine to five job, I was also, also writing my book. A lot of people have that story. Um, it's a very common kind of thing for you're doing the nine to five and you're also doing the creative stuff. Um, and then kind of circumstances just changed where um, I was let go from that job and it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I just never looked back. Like I never went back to corporate America. Um, I shout out to anybody who's in it because I cannot, I am literally built for this life of working for myself and freelancing and entrepreneurship. And it's hard, but it's ultimately rewarding and worth it because I'm not, I'm not the nine to five, you know, sit in a booth girl. I'm just not. Um, and plenty of people are, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But I'm, it just wasn't for me. So I'd always been a writer and I'd always been a hyper creative person. So my journey has literally been, you know, figuring out how to be successful at that, what success means to me, how can I um, incorporate, you know, my business sense with my creativity and all that kind of good stuff. And then, you know, turning 39 and learning that I had ADHD and then struggling to figure all that out. So it's, I mean, it's been a ride. It's been, it's been a ride, but it's been a fun one. No, absolutely. And now for everybody watching, if you're not sure if you should be an entrepreneur or not, or if you should take that nine to five job, do what she did after trying to do what you want to do and go and do what she did for about three months. And then you realize that either you like that mundane thing that's over and over and over and over and you're okay with that, or you'll know for sure that entrepreneurship is for you. Absolutely. Right. Because let's be honest, there's certain jobs that are easy and it's not mundane. It doesn't feel mundane, but the job right. you had, which is still a respectable job to be clear, I'm not mocking mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, but it is the definition of mundane. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So, and that's the thing. And some people, it's for some people. I mean, just like accounting sure. is really mundane. It is for some people. Some people like that. Absolutely. And, but if you're doing something mundane, you'll know right away whether, you know, you can, it is for you or not. And if that's not for you, that's the perfect opportunity to see, hey, you know what? This is not for me. Maybe I should try. Yes. 
100%, 100%. And I'm also kind of, I don't know, at the age or more the mindset too, that I'm, I'm honestly learning to how I can, you know, build wealth and investments and that sort of thing for, for my family and just, you know, going forward in life. Because, I mean, listen, there's nothing wrong with working on somebody else's dream, but you're still working on somebody else's dream. I myself am somebody with big ambitions and a lot of unrealistic expectations. So I want to figure out how I can make my own dreams and my own ideas a reality. So that's, but that's, you know, that's just me. I still need people who want to do the mundane stuff and, you know, and who love it. So as much as I love, you know, being this crazy visionary. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, like you said, entrepreneurship is hard. Like, what would you say was your, because uh, when you make the leap, I'm sure it was, you know, exactly the opposite of what you expected. Yeah, you know what? It's crazy because I didn't really have any expectations. I was just like very ADHD. Oh, I'm just going to do it. And I don't recommend that anybody do it the way that I did. <laughs> At least not. I I, don't, I just want to be clear. I feel like there is a, I don't know. I feel like there might be a better way to do it than just wake up one day and be like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur because you can. Um, but it's a big, it's a bit up uphill climb, especially if, I mean, you had a beautiful uh your Monday motivation that you did this morning was, you know, talking yeah, yeah. about the people that you need to surround yourself with. So, I mean, me, I come from a very, you know, my family's all in like corporate jobs. So there was no one to teach me to be an entrepreneur. So I'm just struggling to figure this out. I mean, and, and, you know, jumping into this is great, but I mean, you can't tell your landlord that, Hey, I'm an entrepreneur now. So I'll get that rent to you as soon as I figure this out. Like you can't, <laughs> you know, that's not how it's going to work. <laughs> Yeah, so you sound a little bit similar to me and, and the way that, and again, so I concur with somebody that's not the t normal, typical way of doing stuff. Um, but like prime example, and this is the way I am, and I think you're similar. Like if we have an idea, and I think it's a great idea, before, by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, I'll have the business cards for our new business that we decided to start together. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I'm I get an idea. And yeah, and I'm just, I'm, that's it. I'm gone and I'm doing it and I'm figuring it out. And, you know, some of them work and some of them don't. And that's, that's, you know, that's literally where we are right now with just, you know, kind of balancing the realistic with the unrealistic, I guess is a great way to put it. It's true. You know, my biggest challenge mm. is that prime example, just say, um, just say I work at McDonald's. I'll give you an example and just say sure. I'm going to resign because I just, going to do something else. And, you know, you put in your two weeks notice. I actually struggle with that because when I decide I'm done with something, I'm done with something. I'm not coming back. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And I've actually kind of in all the jobs that I've had that I've um, left, it hasn't been like a, a two week notice thing. So, I mean, the corporate America job, I hilariously got fired um, because listen, in corporate America, don't get into a fight with HR. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Uh don't do that. But I wasn't supposed to be there anymore. So it was a blessing in disguise. And I got severance and it opened me up to do some other things. And I bartended on Bourbon Street for a while in New Orleans. And that was great. But that was a job when I was done. I was done. Mm -hmm. I worked at a small luxury hotel for a while. And that was great. But that was another one. When it was done, it was just done. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. Like when I'm when I'm don't have the energy for something anymore, like I just cut it off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, like when I sold my uh, marketing business, print and marketing business back in 2007, now I had sold it originally in the beginning of May, like I think it was like May 2nd or 3rd or 4th, whatever it is that we made the deal. It was like right, right in the first week. Right. Um, the catch was they needed me to hang on till October 1st. And I had checked out in May. I was done. I had like, it was torture. I bet. Like, so think of it, the business that I've been going to for years, <laughs> I had just made the deal. I had just sold it. It was no different than any other day, but just the fact that I knew that I sold it, I was done with it. It was like somebody locked me up in prison and told me I couldn't get out till October. I know. And I was like, <laughs> I bet you that was like, just so hard. You're just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the joke of it is that uh, the, the extra, I got extra money to stay to October. I actually got double than what I asked for. Wow. Because they wanted me to stay to October. So I actually made double. Right. But it was still torture. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. It's just, it's the way your brain works. You know, and I think, you know, I think there is, there is something, there's something to that, right? That just knowing yourself so well that you know that when you are done, you are just done and you're just ready to put your energy and your time in something else. I mean, because I feel like our time is just so precious. So absolutely, less, the one resource we can't replace. You can't, you can't. And I feel like people need to be a lot more stingy with their time. You really, 100%. Yeah.
You really do. So if you've got an idea and something that you want to do, go for it because, I mean, that's a minute you're not going to get back. So just make sure that whatever it is you're doing, you really want to be there. And if it's not where you want to be, then start taking those steps to get where you do because, I mean, time. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think, I, I personally think, um, I, and I'm, I'm self-diagnosing here, uh -huh. is that I think I have ADHD as well. And I'm going to tell you a little characteristic and you tell me if it sounds similar. Okay. And um, one thing is, prime example, if I have an idea and I execute that idea and um, I know it's going to work, like once it's proven and I'm 100% sure that the idea is working, I don't actually need to do it or finish it. I just need to know that I was right. And once I know I'm right, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's, I mean, with ADHD, like you do, you, you, you have the idea to start something. And a lot of times I know for me, my problem is that that's, it's almost like this instant gratification thing. Like it's, it's my biggest challenge. I think is that things take time to build. And when you have ADHD, the only time is now. There is no other, yeah. there is no other time. There is now and that is it. So building something that takes time to kind of go where you want can be insanely frustrating. And I think I know that I've got an idea that really resonates with me and my soul and what I'm supposed to do when I stick with it. Like it's not just one of those one-offs. It's no, this is what I want to do. And even though I'm frustrated as hell that it's not getting there as fast as I want it, this is still it because I just love it. So yeah, well, well, that's the thing, right? I could play the long game and I usually do. Right. Right. A lot of my, all the stuff that, uh, you know, were successful for me and we're talking about eight figures successful is this the ones that I've, uh, you know, played the long game. Nice. Right. Yeah. Like it's the ones that I've done quickly. It's always been like minuscule, just not even worth mentioning it. Um, and but where I'm going with it is that like I don't even need to hit the eight figures. I just need to know that I will. Once I know that I will, then it's the biggest struggle to show up to work. <laughs> That's I, interesting. I love that. <laughs> right. Like yeah, and, I, and, I feel and, like and, you should go take a test because I, I love that. I love that. You're like. Eh, all right, I can do it. Next. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's the thing, right? Because uh, like, it's one of those things that says, okay, it's going to take me 10 years to get the 9 million, just say. Right. Well, somebody turns around and, you know, and says, hey, you know what? You're on track to do it in three years. Okay, so I'm going to get there. Yeah, okay, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> but you haven't made it yet. It doesn't matter. I just needed to know that I could. Right, right, right. I'll get there. <laughs> that's it. I love that. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I usually complete things, but it's once I know that I could, it becomes a struggle to continue. That's hilarious. I love that. I love that you just need the proof that you could do it. And now that you know that, you're off to the next thing. That's phenomenal. That's, that's great. <laughs> you know what, John? I'm going to start putting all my ideas now in front of you. And if you tell me they're successful, then I'll play the long game on them. And that's it. And you can. You can <laughs> there we, there go. we go. Away we go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, right? Like, so again, now, yeah, so we're similar that way. We have that, um, that little thing that you're right. I probably should find out. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> listen, it's been, it's been really, really helpful to me, really helpful to, to know that. So yeah, it makes sense. Right. So it would explain a lot of things, right. Explain certain things by, and again, the benefits, I mean, I'm very self-aware. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear. Yes. I'm very self-aware. And one of the benefits I have is that, uh, I don't regret very many things. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, like I can, if I decide that I'm stopping today, I'm stopping today. There's no emotion, no shoulda, coulda, woulda. Oh, what if I did this? What if I did? No, no, no. I, I'm cold turkey. See you later. Done. I don't think twice about it. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, and, and that's the way things are, right? Like, which is good because that means I'm very quick to make decisions. There's no such thing as thinking right. about it for me. Right, right, right. You know what you want. And yeah, listen, there's, I think there's, there's something to that as well, especially if you've got a great team of people around you that can help you execute or check out, you know, in certain ways because of the business but yeah absolutely and you brought up a key component there key people
Yeah, I find that a lot of times the people closest to you will be the last person to support you. 100%. It's almost like they're going to, yeah, they're going to see what's going on. And if you're, if it looks successful, then they want to join. Yes. Oh my God. That's a hundred percent. 100%. Like my, my family is very supportive, but in a kind of a base level way, like, you know, supportive because they're your family and they're supposed to be like, oh, that's great. Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. But they're not passionate. They're not excited about what you want to do. Right. But you know, the moment that it's like successful to that kind of corporate, you know, capitalist kind of like, you know, level then all of a sudden they're just, they're going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And that, like, look, my parents or my dad, let's be specific. My dad was like, I remember growing up and all that. Uh, every time I had a venture, he goes, when are you going to, you know, grow up and stop doing the nonsense and then go get a real job? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And, and then, then, you know, like, and then all of a sudden uh, when I hit that uh, that marketing business and uh, I sold it, he turns to me and says, why the hell did you do that? You were doing so good. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. When I yeah. when I started that, I was nuts, and when I need to get a real job. Oh yeah. Listen, I was I was adamant. I cut my family off because after I I mean I also taught myself web design, right? So I'm a web designer kind of on the side. I do a little bit of freelance to you know help make ends meet and stuff. And it was a fantastic skill to learn because it saved me thousands of dollars being you know great at web design. But uh, when I first started freelancing, it was a it was kind of new and it was a concept that my mom and my stepfather just couldn't wrap their brains around. Right? That you just like what do you mean you don't know when you're going to get paid. Like, what is like, what is all this? And they'd be like, you know, get a real, I'd be like, this is my job. Like, you're going to stop telling me to get a real job because I work just as hard as you. I just do it this way. Like I was, I put my foot down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which brings up the point, right? Like your surroundings, which is kind of what I talked about today and kind of, uh, you know, why you said you had to kind of cut people off kind of thing. What are you like, we know not everyone's going to support you. Like, how do you evaluate who stays in your life? Who doesn't, how many chances do they get? How long do they get? And you know what I mean? Or like, is it like, do you give a person a warning or do you just realize that certain people are just going to have a certain outlook in the hell with them kind of thing? You know what? I've never had to really, the people that I've had to cut out of my life had not it wasn't around kind of like business or entrepreneurship or that sort of thing. I found that as you kind of grow and level up as a person, people just kind of naturally fall off. And that's kind of just been my experience. Like, I mean, um, I love my family, but I don't really talk about what I'm doing with them. Um, every now and then I'll let them know something that's going on or whatever, but that's not really, we don't talk about, you know, Hey, you know, I've got this idea, like guys, let's learn how to do real estate, for example. Cause you know, maybe we can get out of our, maybe I can help you guys get out of my nine, our nine to fives. Like I might've been talking, might as well have been talking to a wall. Nobody was interested. So I'm like, fine, I'll learn on my own. Um, but the people that have, you know, moved into my circle that I consider kind of my found family, they just showed up. And I expect that that's what's going to happen as, you know, I continue to level up in my business and goals and that sort of thing that I think people who are naturally supposed to be there will come. And then the people who aren't supposed to be there, I, I think, you know, I, you know, you can really just tell if someone is just there because they're riding on your coattails, those people aren't, I don't think they're really sneaky, but I have a good ability to read people. Not a lot of people have that. Some people can't read people to save their life. I'm not one of those. I can kind of read people. So I can tell when somebody's just waiting for you to succeed so they can be like, yes, I've always supported you versus the people who were actually like there and digging in and helping you. So it's odd how that happens. Yeah, you're right. And I agree with you when you say that when as you do better, the people who don't belong tend to fade away. But there's also sometimes that, uh, I don't know, I don't want to call it nostalgia, but sometimes uh, you have somebody that's what I call a Debbie Downer. Oh, yeah. Right? And it's like they're nice people, mm -hmm. but it's one of those things that the problem with this, the problem with that, there's always a problem. It's like even when things are good, it's bad. Oh, yeah. Right? So. I just, you know what? I don't really engage with those people because I do. I have a couple of, I have, I've had a couple of people in the past that were kind of like that. And I just, you just don't you kind of just don't talk about the things that you love in front of those people and you just don't spend that much time with them anymore. You know, I find that literally just kind of just, you don't have to be rude unless they're like really like adamant about, you know, and then you're just kind of like, you have to set your boundaries. But I found kind of just like just stepping away, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just slide right out of that. Absolutely. It makes total sense. Now going forward, where do you see yourself going? Like what's the objective? Big. I've got a lot of I've got a lot of big goals that I'm working on, you know, trying to get there. So with the Tales of the Forgotten Fiction Network, I mean, we're just going to keep telling more shows, um, growing our community of voice actors, expanding that as far as it can go. 
I am someone who is very knowledgeable about the power of your intellectual property and everything that you can do with it. So when I talk about us doing audio dramas in the back of my mind, it's not just audio dramas. We can make animated comics. Now we can write books. We can do audio books. Uh, eventually I'm going to be a movie director because that's just something that I've always wanted to do and I'm going to learn how to do it. Um, you know, there's other goals as well. Like yourself, I want to get into real estate because I just think it's a fantastic and really smart move to make. Um, I think that there's a lot of um, a housing crisis in this country. And I think that if I am ever in a position that I can take a burden off someone and make their life a little bit easier so they can follow their creative dream and we can create an environment that supports them, I'm going to do that. So there's, I've got a whole vision board of stuff that I want to accomplish. So they're big goals and I'm just determined to get there. Love that. Now you said it in terms of real estate, like what aspect of real estate, you know, were you thinking? Cause there's many different uh, portions of the same industry. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, ideally what I would love to slowly get into is, um, you know, long-term and short-term rentals. And then um, from there, we've got a whole idea of this community that our, my friends and I want to build for ourselves. And hopefully in learning how to do that, we can teach other people how to do it as well. Um, because I think owning your house and, not just owning your house, but I mean, you and I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I just want to hammer in how important community is. And when you are in an environment where people are supporting you and you are all working towards the same goal, what you can accomplish and how, I don't want to say easier, but kind of how easier it is to do that is night and day compared to when you are in a situation where not only are you fighting like your own internal stuff, but you're fighting the energy and you're trying to pull yourself up out of this muck. Like it's so freaking hard. So, I mean, in the future, if we can, you know, me and my, you know, my friends, we really just want to make it a community where people are supported to do the things that they love. So, and I will do whatever I got to do so we can get there. Absolutely. Okay. So you're looking from the investment aspect, not being an agent or anything yeah, like that. No, more yeah, no, yeah, absolutely portion. more of the investment parts. Absolutely. So I've spent the last like year slowly learning about real estate. Now I'm just trying to figure out how I can get started so I can, I can start jumping in. Ah, that's a lot. Of, that's easy. Getting started is easy, right? Okay. It's not, well, <laughs> let me rephrase it. <laughs> 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 I mean, it takes discipline and time, right. but it's not like, it's not rocket science. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's one of those things that there's many avenues. Like I, I'll, like, especially if you're looking at it as an investment perspective, mm -hmm. I say the best way to start off is by pooling money and investing in a group uh, as a group. So you get it started. It's better to get started and build equity over time than it is to hold off to do something on your own. 100% agree. 100%. So, you know what, after this job, I'm going to, I'm going to be picking your brain. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And for everybody else watching, if you want an easy opportunity where you can invest in real estate without having the liabilities, you can invest with Papaloni Capital. That's me. Hey, wait a minute. I got a fund. <laughs> hey. shameless, shameless plug. There we go. Listen, it's your show. You should. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's not not often that uh, you know I lead up to something like that where I just basically jump right hey, in. Hey, it was like a that. great segue. I'd have been disappointed if you hadn't taken the opportunity. It was a great segue. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, you have great goals, and I like that, right? I love how you, the fact that you want to go big, right? There's, I have a theory, and my theory is like you know everyone says I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you now go big or go oh home go big or go home <laughs> right now why would anybody want to go home? I mean, unless you really. So like it should be go big or go bigger. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> You're right, though. It really should. I, I didn't create that one, but, uh, you know, when I heard it, I loved it, right? Like it, it was so true. Because at the end of it, everyone says go big or go home, right? And the tr and it's so true. Why would anyone want to go home? Right. Just keep going. Go bigger. Yeah. yeah. Keep, keep, keep seeing what you, when you hit that next level, move your own goalposts. All right. What's next? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And again, it goes back to what we said, community and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Too many times do I see in my own experience where I see that, uh, you know, you, you talk about joint ventures with somebody or with partnering up with somebody and it's like, oh, no, I, you know, something I'm going to build by myself and all that. And it's like, really? You're like, OK, well, you, you want 100 percent. Yeah, well, 100 percent of 100,000 is 100,000, but 50 percent of a million. Is five hundred thousand. Which one's better off? Right. Right. And, and people I, again, maybe that's a big stretch that I made. But the point is, when you're collaborating with people, 
that number is always bigger. Absolutely. And when that number is bigger, it's 50% of a bigger number, still more than 100% of a small number. And, and it just always works out that way. So people, you know, you know, the minute people learn to collaborate and work together, the, that's the minute that they learn they, they can build something bigger. Now, prime example, even if you have, you know, people say when you uh, do something good for a client, then uh, maybe one or two people hear it. But when you do something bad to someone, 10 or 12 people hear mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the same sort of thing with the collaboration. Now, when you're talking to somebody about your business by yourself that you have 100 percent ownership of and 100 percent investment in, there's going to be maybe 10 or 12 people around you that you can talk to. So that's basically going to be your expansion. Yes. Now, where if you deal with 10 of you doing that and all, you all have 10 to 12 people, now you've reached 120 people for the same project. 100 percent. 100 percent yeah so, listen you can unite people around a common goal that's it's powerful it's really really powerful exactly exactly uh and and, and that's why i don't uh i think too many people focus on competition where well, the competition is doing this the competition is doing that at the end of the day what you forgot to do is what are you doing who cares what your competition is doing 100 percent. collaboration is key it really really is and people have to i mean you learn like that's one of the reasons why i love the voice acting community so much is because it's not competitive even though it, I mean, it is in a way, but it's still like, I mean, voice actors, they're always cheering each other on, supporting people. Like, and I love that type of energy because that's the type of community you want to be in because then everybody wins. Then your recommended people, you know, casting calls comes out, you're sharing them amongst yourselves. Like, it's fantastic. So collaboration all the time. Don't go it alone. Don't go it alone. Get a friend. Absolutely. I love that. So I, I'm in the same perspective there. I, um, what do you call it again? Yeah, you're right. And there's certain communities that are that way. And and it's and you and you can learn from people. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's the, the I think that's why I love audio drama so much, because I mean, a lot of times, you know, an author is a as a as a book writer, it's kind of a solitary project. Sure, you're going to collaborate with editors and cover artists and that sort of thing. But the kind of the creation part is by yourself. But when you're putting together an audio drama, um, it becomes this beautiful collaborative thing where, sure, I write the words and I'll direct, but now I have people who are bringing those words to life. And as a writer, there is nothing better than hearing somebody act the words that you wrote or bring that character to like a whole, it go, it's living for like 2D to 3D. And it's just, there is nothing like it. It is phenomenal. Yeah, you're right. Now, which brings up another perspective, right? Because uh, you've said this throughout the show, and uh, my slow brain just picked it up. And um, <laughs> <laughs> is that, um, you know, you, you're very creative, right? You obviously have that creative mindset, that creative, you know, like, I believe that we're all born the same. Mm -hmm. And um, how we become is basically on the environment and stuff we see and observe. Sure. So where, at what point in time did you realize that you were more of that creative person than just say maybe the whole uh, corporate, uh, you know, structure, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like uh, we're all different. And, and, and again, you, you, you're self-aware enough to know that you have the creative mindset. So when did you realize that? Very young. I knew, so I always knew that I was very imaginative and creative because I was always the one that was not just playing with, you know, my Legos and my GI Joes and my Barbies, but I'm telling whole stories around like we've got, you know, days of our lives episodes going on with like all of this. And then, you know, you start right. I started writing stories when I was super, super young. Um, and then it was it was less about knowing that I was creative and more about knowing that I could be creative as a job, basically. You know, it, you know, it's one thing to say, sure, I'm super creative and I have a big imagination. It's another thing that I can now use. This as a skill that can carry me through some of kind of the adulty life things. So that's that's what it was for me is is kind of transitioning from I, I can just be creative all the time. I don't have to be, you know, this thing that I don't want to be. Love that. Now with everything, when we have a when we have a decision like that and we decide to take movement in our life and it doesn't matter what direction we take there's always challenges that come with it and there's always struggles that come with it now when how do you handle like when you come across something like that that causes that friction how do you handle the friction and stress like how, how do you get past everything not well <laughs> <laughs> um i have a wonderful partner who is incredibly supportive of all my insane moods and 
you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big proponent of therapy. I think we all need it. I think if you don't think you need therapy, you need two therapists. Um, I, I am a big proponent of meditation and, um, you know, going for walks and being out in nature. People underestimate the power of vitamin D and just standing in a park and taking a deep breath and kind of reconnecting with yourself and, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of kind of um, just very simplistic things that I think people overlook that will help you navigate the stresses of doing what you want to do. Because I mean, if we're just completely honest, this world, it's very hard to step outside of boxes because this world is kind of built that way, unfortunately. Um, and especially now with so many, you know, the rise of like so much freelancing and creative stuff and, you know, um, it, it, it can be stressful and it's always going, it, when you want to be an entrepreneur and not work for somebody else, kind of how everything is set up, right? You are like you, we said earlier, you are taught from a young age that your job is to get a job. Your job is not to buy a job or to be a CEO. That's not what they teach you. They teach you to work for somebody else. They don't teach you to be the boss. They never teach that. Um, so trying to 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 navigate all that just do simple things y'all go to therapy if you need it you do um do some exercise take that walk do a little bit of meditation remember to breathe relax your jaw get that out your shoulders you know do that stuff throughout your day find people that can support you find your tribe that's huge having that support system and uh and you'll you're gonna be okay love that answer now you brought up something here right like you said everybody needs therapy if you think you don't you probably need two therapists <laughs> And I'm going to tell you something. Uh -huh. I cannot get therapy. Why you can't? What do you mean you can't get it? Because people think I'm crazy, and I like that. And if I got therapy, that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just need to find your therapist, John. I think. I, I think. <laughs> Because let me tell you something. I have told my therapist some crazy shit, and I'm not wearing grippy socks yet. So I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as I have your assurance there. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just got to find the right one, okay? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I love it. Now, but this is the one thing, right? Like, I mean, even though, I mean, like, all jokes aside, right? Like, like again, right? You're self-aware, and, and you realize right away, you said... Like, I think you're a little bit hard on yourself here. And what I mean by that, because when I said, how do you deal with it? You said not very well. The reality is you just gave us a whole structure of what you do. Now, maybe the expectation of how you, how we believe it should be handled and how it's actually handled don't meet. And maybe that's why you don't think you handle it well. Right. Right. Yeah. Because right? we're told that things are just simple, you know, just suck it up, move on yeah. as if that's, you know, somebody telling you that is going to make it happen. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> just, just don't be depressed, bro. Just don't have anxiety. Just don't. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone should tell that person that just by saying that gives you more anxiety. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But that's the thing. But the point is, you don't allow yourself to lounge around and pout. You actually do something about it. Whether it's therapy, whether it's going for a walk, right? Like. You could let it, like a lot of people, and today, I, I believe we're in a community where we play victimhood here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do that. They play that victim and use whatever happens as an excuse to not do what they should be doing. Right, right. And, and you know, kudos to you for not doing that, realizing, okay, there's a problem and you did something. Yeah, you have to. I mean, I, I, so. I think eventually you just get tired of being where you are and you have to have the bravery to pull yourself out of that. And I mean, I mean, and not even bravery, just be fed up. You know, if you if you if you don't think just just be like, I don't like the way this is going anymore. And darn it, I want to change it. So, <laughs> you know, just do it out of spite, whatever motivates you, just whatever, you know, just just do it because it's it's not easy. But ultimately, you have to. You just have to. Absolutely. Love that. No, love that. You're right. Absolutely. So with that being said, like going forward, right? Obviously there's, I, I talked a lot about, about the negative side, right? But there's also a positive side mm -hmm. now. And what I mean by that is that sometimes we overcome that challenge and then we get it to a point where we feel like, Hey, you know what? Okay. Mm -hmm. That hard was done. Yes. I'm going to have new hard coming, <laughs> but that hard was done. Yes. So now you feel that sense of accomplishment, what I call that aha moment where you feel everything and all the struggles you've done and all the uh, hardships you went through is sort of starting to pay off. And you feel like that aha moment where it's like, okay, I'm going the right direction. And we have, I believe we have many of those in our lives. And some of the times we don't even realize we had one. 
And some people never have it and stay in victimhood, but I'm talking about productive people and you're a productive person. You're moving forward. So with that being said, what was your first aha moment where you realized that even, you know, going past all the uh, things that people would consider scary, you just made the right move. You're on the right path. You're on the right journey and you know where you're supposed to be. My first aha moment would have been probably after my first divorce. That was my, that was my aha moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I will never forget kind of, um, I had been living in New Orleans for a while. Um, Hurricane Katrina drove us out of New Orleans and New Orleans is a place that I love so much that I was like, immediately I got to go back. Um, and it was kind of at that moment that just things just weren't going well. And I realized that if I wasn't the one to to make the change, it was never going to happen. And that's a hard realization and that's a hard moment. Um, but I just did it and I, and I, and I just did it. And I'm just, I, I, I'll never forget how I felt with like everything I owned in the back of my CRV, um, just driving down the highway back home to a whole new future that I was going to take kind of by myself. And that was, you know, when I learned that I could do it. And there were a lot of stumbles and, you know, you're God, over your life, like you said, you're going to have so many of these, you know, hot moments and realizations. But I think when you're in the struggle and I'm, I'm still, I'm in a whole different struggle now. And when you're in it, I think it's important to have those little moments where you can remember that once you get out of this, you are now going to be able to help somebody else, right? Because we can have all the empathy in the world for people and we should, because we don't know what anybody else is going through. But it's one thing to say, you know, I'm really sorry you're going through that. Is there anything I can do versus being able to look somebody in the eye and be like, I know exactly where you are because I've been there. How can I help you? You know, having that knowledge that, hey, this is how I did it and having that knowledge to share, it's priceless because that's what I want to hear. Like, you know, I people having empathy and support is great, but let me talk to somebody who's literally kind of been in the same mud that I've been in and how did you clean off? How did you get out of that? Let me talk to that person. So all your struggles, very cliche, they make you stronger, but they also give you the ability to help someone. And I think that's really beautiful. Amazing. Now, obviously a lot of your... Um outcomes or desires involve helping people in some form. It's not, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't hear the whole uh, financial gain or the uh, desire to become a billionaire or a trillionaire or any of those heirs. <laughs> it's uh, really more about, uh, you know, almost how you can uh, give back to the community. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's really, really huge. Now, 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 trust me, I absolutely want to be a millionaire, but it's not so much the money for me as the desire, right? It's what I want. It's what the money would give me. If it was bottle caps, I'd want bottle caps, right? But I don't really want the money as much as I want to be able to travel the world and have the wedding that I want. And if I see a friend who's got to go fund me, I can just pay that. Or if, you know, if you could, there's so many different ways that we can maybe help people. And I just want to put myself in a position where I can do that because I have had a great life, but I've had one where I struggled a lot with a lot of different things. And if I can make somebody else's moment community day better, then I don't understand why you wouldn't want to do that. Like, I don't, I, I never understood the mentality of like, well, I suffered, so, so should you. That's, you are a psychopath. You are an absolute freaking psychopath if you think that. Like, no, we're supposed to make things better for people, not worse. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I have, I have a, oh, this is, the, this is, you know what? It's one of those things. I have something to say about it, but I'm not going to say it on camera because if that person I, I, that watches it oh, no. will take it the wrong way. And it's, uh, <laughs> and, and, and to be honest, maybe they should take it the wrong way, but it's one of those things I don't want to actually say it. <laughs> so Just keep it off I'll camera. tell you about it. Keep it off camera. I'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you touched a point and I was like sitting there going, oh man, where was this conversation when I was in that show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but this is what I mean by sometimes where I think we share similar personalities that way. But, um, which brings up the other point you said, uh, you know, your first divorces, how many friggin' divorces have you had? Just one. Just the one. Oh, just one. okay. I'm Are not, you expecting I'm not more? Eric no, no, I do not. No, I am currently. Because you said you're first as if you're expecting no, more. No, no, I, I really, you know what? My phrasing. No, I, uh, I am currently. I know. I'm just joking and, around. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm a, I'm a all or nothing type of gal. So I am, I am in it for till the end. So I'm ready. I'm sure you can tell him a shit disturber. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> 
I could tell with your last name. Come on, my stepdad's Italian. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I know. I know how this goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So I'm going to have a couple more questions before I go into what I call the lightning round. Okay. So second last question is going to be, how do you know you've had a successful day? Mm, how I feel at the end of that day. Ooh, how I love. feel. Yes, absolutely. If I can go to bed with a sense of ease and happiness and feeling a little bit of accomplishment and that accomplishment does not have to be way to productivity. I think we get really obsessed with if I don't do 50 things on my to-do list that I'm a failure and that's crazy. Um, but literally how I feel is how I know if I've had a successful day or not. Love that. Love that. That is so true. All right. So last question, but not least, or second last question is going to be, what advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs? <sighs> That's a big one. Um, I'm going to say something that <laughs> have both. I'm going to say some con contradictory things and I'm going to hopefully explain. Have some both unrealistic and realistic expectations. Have a big dream, have a big goal, and then get yourself someone who can help you get there in a slightly realistic manner. Now, what do I mean? mean? I mean, somebody, especially if you have ADHD, that is going to tell you, you think you can get this done in 30 minutes. It's actually going to take two weeks. I need you to understand that. People who have ADHD, you need that. Now, if you put in together systems, you know, communities, you know, people that can help you narrow that down from, you know, two weeks to three days, that's great but you need to have a strong sense of self-awareness. You need to surround yourself with people who are gonna be honest and who can help you. And you need to have both realistic and unrealistic goals. And I think if you do that, you will, you will go really far because I think as an entrepreneur, we're supposed to have big ideas and really kind of stretch the limit of imagination. But now you need people on your team who are gonna help you get there. Right, love it. Awesome. All right. Last but not least, before the lightning round, which is going to be anybody looking to reach out to you and find you, where would they go? Absolutely. Go to crystalsimagination.com to learn more about just me personally, my projects. Um, I'm always looking to join you on your podcast, be a host, voice acting. Um, you want to collaborate, go there. If you want to learn more about our audio fiction, audio dramas, or join our roster of voice actors, go to talesoftheforgotten.com and check out our shows. Fantastic. All right. Let's get into the lightning round. Let's go. Question number one. Okay. What is your favorite food and why? French fries, 1,000% because they're delicious. All right, I'm coming over. I want French fries. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number two, favorite travel spot and why? Uh, right now it is New Orleans because it is one of the best cities ever. It's got a great vibe for creatives. One day I'm going to get to travel the world and it'll probably be somewhere in Spain because I just feel very drawn to it. But right now it's New Orleans. Good answer. All right. Question number three, favorite book or podcast? Ooh, my favorite book is Phantoms by Dean Coots. Uh, yes, that is my favorite book because it's scary. It scared the crap out of me. He is an author that I have a love-hate relationship, but that book of his, I absolutely still adore to this day. Yeah, it makes sense. I get it. Awesome. Last but not least, if you were given unlimited amount of money, but only 48 hours to spend it, what you spend, you get to keep. What you don't spend gets taken away. What would you do? Whoo! I got 48 hours to spend it? You got it. Uh-huh. I am immediately buying land to build the community. There we yeah, go. That's, that's it. it. Mic drop. Mm -hmm. That's it. Game over. Ooh, done. <laughs> I've hired, in two minutes, I've hired all the builders, you know, whatever. I've literally... <laughs> We're building 15 houses. I got the acres. Let's go. <laughs> it's the only time you'll get prepayment there. Yeah, exactly. That is the only time the contractor's getting prepayment. That's it. <laughs> Crystal, it's been phenomenal. I thank you so much. And I feel absolutely grateful for having you on my show today. Oh, thank you so much, John. This was so much fun. So thank you for having me on. And I hope to collaborate you on with something, some project in the future. We got to work together. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. Yes. If you like what you saw and you want to see some more, subscribe to the link below. Thanks for tuning in to The John Papaloni Show.